Hey everybody, this is Post Production Pi with SRLounge.com and welcome to another Lightroom 4 edit. Now in this episode we're going to be editing this image that was shot by David Hill. David actually posted this image to our constructive critique section on our forum, which I'd highly recommend you guys join and participate in. It's a really great place just to have your images constructively critiqued by other photographers. Now when David posted this, I saw the image and I immediately just fell in love with it and I wanted to feature it in one of our edits. And I really enjoyed this shot for several reasons. I mean, primarily the main reason I enjoyed this shot is just the overall expression of our young girl right here. She's looking right into the camera. We see her big, beautiful eyes. She has this light and soft, subtle smile on her face. And number two is the overall crop and composition. A lot of you might look at the shot and say, well, the side of her face is kind of cropped out. It doesn't feel like a correct crop. But this crop and composition is actually a very typical shot and composition that's used in close-up portrait photography. And I'm going to show you guys in a second that it actually still follows compositional rules as well. And so that close-up crop and kind of overall composition gives a very kind of candid and spontaneous nature to the overall image along with kind of her hair that's flowing and kind of moving haphazardly across the shot. So all this combined uh, just kind of makes for this really nice candid and natural shot which I really dig about it. But check this out. I'm going to hit R to bring up my crop overlay and I'm going to hit O to switch to the rule of thirds. And uh, you can just hit O until you cycle through the basically the different rules. And I don't think David was thinking about this when he was shooting the shot. He was probably just shooting it in a way that felt natural to him and that's what most of us do. But watch this. This is the rule of thirds and we can see that the eye is a little bit off on here. But watch when we switch to the golden ratio. The eye is falling right on the one third line in golden ratio. Watch when we switch to diagonals. Again, the right eye is falling right across the diagonal. Watch again when we switch to triangles. We have again another diagonal and the eye is coming right across that diagonal. Now most likely David wasn't thinking about each of these compositional rules when he was shooting the shot. He was just composing it and shooting it in a way that felt right and natural. David, if you were thinking about it, then that's awesome. More power to you, brother. But overall, following this kind of composition really adds a lot to the overall image. Now, as far as post-production, let's talk about what I'm kind of envisioning for this shot. We have a great shot. It was shot natural light. It's very candid, very fun, and I want it to have a very nice light feel to it. So that's kind of how we're going to produce it. Now, like all of our edits, we're going to edit it first with the Lightroom 4 preset system, and then we're going to show you all the sliders and everything that we did afterwards so those that don't have the preset system can benefit as well. Now, let's get started. This image would have come into Lightroom with a standard import preset, but we didn't apply it, so let's apply it now. Now, I'm going to dial in all the base adjustments. We're going to create our own, basically, preset for this image rather than following kind of one of the existing mixologies. So let's get started. Again, like I mentioned, I want to go with a really nice, bright, and kind of airy look to this shot. So what I'm going to do is adjust up to exposure by about 1.5 stops. We're going to make adjustments and fine-tuning to this stuff later on, so don't worry about it right now. It's a little bit on the bright side, but let's just keep going through. We're going to do a portrait flatten on the base tones to kind of smooth out the highlights a bit. I'm going to go and do a heavy skin soften because this is a very close-up portrait shot. So we can do a little bit more softening than we normally would. I'm going to go down now, we're going to go to contrast and do a light fade just to kill a little bit of the contrast of the image which again is going to smooth out those skin tones. We're going to get back that contrast when we add in our tone curve as well as adjust down our blacks which we're going to do right now. So let's adjust the blacks down to a medium dark in a little bit and now let's go and select our curve. So what I'm going to do is because curves affect saturation we're going to make that final adjustment last. So let's go to neutral curves and what I would want is just kind of a, let's go with a punchy look, but I want it to be slightly desaturated. So I'm going to pick a neutral punch, but have it be desaturated. Now it's a little bit too desaturated, so I'm just going to make a couple fine tuning adjustments in a second. But let's go over to our right side panel from here and kind of discuss what we've walked through. Now from here, basically what we've done is we've brightened up the image quite a bit with our exposure adjustment. We've brought the contrast down, which has smoothed out the skin tones. It's also basically taken out any kind of crazy coloring and stuff that we would get in our shadows. We've pulled down the highlights and the whites, which has basically brought down the, the highlights on skin. We've brought down a little bit of the shadows and blacks, which has added back some contrast because we killed our contrast with that adjustment over here. We also have pulled down our clarity to negative 25 just to soften out the skin a little bit more and pulled our vibrance down to negative 30. We're going to make some fine tune adjustments there. So our tone curve is a standard S curve on this. 
um, which is just basically boosting a little bit of the shadows or contrasting the shadows and then boosting up the highlights just a little bit as far as uh, luminosity. Now in the detail we have our standard sharpening that's being applied but we have 30 noise reduction and this was applied with that skin softening preset because it's going to basically smooth out kind of the fine pores and stuff in the skin and we're not going to really notice on a shot that's this close we're not going to notice a lot of detail lost but we will notice that kind of improvement in kind of the overall skin pores and stuff like that. As far as lens vignetting we have our standard amount of 30 30 applied. This is just from the standard import preset and that's fine right there actually. So let's go up and let's start making some fine tuning adjustments. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually bring back up my vibrance just a little bit. I want to get a little bit more color in it. Probably around negative 15 to negative 20 is where I want to leave it. And from here I'm just going to darken the exposure just a titch. I don't want to go too much. Just make a really fine tuning adjustment there. I'm going to bring my tint up to around plus 15 and then I'm going to dial in the exact temperature that I want with this shot. I want to go a little bit on the warm side, but I also want it to have a kind of a light and airy feel. And so it's going to be a little bit cooler. And I'm actually going to dial in an exact tint of, let's go with plus 15 rather than 17. So it gets a little bit more yellow slightly in there. Now this is where I would say the color image is, is pretty solid at this point. Let's make some fine tuning adjustments as far as basically retouch. And then we'll call this color version good right here. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to select my uh, spot removal tool. I noticed earlier in the shot that she has like a little eye goober right here. We're just going to remove that with our spot healing tool. And the this little spot removal tool is great for this kind of stuff. I even noticed a little thing right there because these kind of things act kind of like dust. So when we use that spot removal tool to remove it, it actually does a really good job. But if we did want to remove things like this strand of hair, we would probably need to go into Photoshop for that. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be convenient to do that in Lightroom. Now, as far as her freckles, I love her freckles. It adds a lot to the shot. It's really part of her look, and we don't want to clone those out. There is one that it's kind of optional. If you wanted to clone this one out, you could, simply because it's a little bit more distracting right on the tip of her nose. But again, I'm going to leave that up to you. We'll do it just for the sake of the tutorial. We don't want to do it to the point where she doesn't look like she is who she is type thing. So that's very much a part of her look. We're not going to make any more adjustments there. Now the only other thing I want to do as far as retouch goes is I want to basically brighten up just a little bit of the kind of lighting underneath the eyes. We have a little bit of kind of darkening in that skin. And I'm going to show you guys a little trick here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my uh, adjustment brush right here. We're going to do a dodge one stop brighten. And if you don't have these presets guys, just dial them in as you we go. Just pause the video and you can dial them in. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to reduce our flow all the way down to around 10 to 15 percent. And what this is going to do basically is going to allow us to apply this effect in a very soft and kind of gradual way. So I'm just going to keep applying it and it's going to very subtly brighten these areas without going kind of too far. So whoops, I accidentally clicked on the adjustment brush and then adjust it. If you do that, just hit Control Z. There it is. Update the exposure adjustment. What happens is we clicked on this and when you drag on it, it'll adjust the overall power and effect of it. We want to make sure we don't do that. So again, I'm just going to keep kind of painting in here just to kind of brighten up this overall area. And we don't want to go to the point where it's too far. So I'm just going to leave it about right there. And then let's go to the other side, do the exact same thing on the other side. We don't want to go to the point where it looks unnatural basically. So just be careful not to go too far. I think right there is pretty good. Let's turn it off and then back on and see what we have. So here's with it off, here's with it back on. We have a very subtle adjustment. If we wanted to, what we could do is hold Alt. Once again, you can do the same thing by turning the flow down on the eraser brush. And then you're just going to kind of do some fine tuning adjustments and just make sure it's kind of is, uh, I'm just holding Alt this entire time. Option on a Mac, guys. And just kind of make some fine tuning adjustments just to kind of correct that. All right, so overall, this is great. Here is the color version of this image that I would like to keep. Kind of has very subtle colors. If you guys wanted to bump the vibrance, you can. But remember that when you take vibrance up, you're going to have to really tweak the skin tones to make sure that you don't have too much color basically going on in like the shadows and stuff, areas of the skin tone. So I kind of like to keep my skin tone just a little bit more on the subtle and kind of desaturated side just so it, it looks a little more even and stuff. We don't get crazy colors in the shadows and everything. All right, actually, I'm going to go back down to negative 15. So this looks great right there. We're going to call that our color version. Let's check out the before and after. Here's our before. Here's our after. We've gone with this really kind of soft, bright, and airy look with our color version of the image. And now let's hit Control apostrophe or Command apostrophe on a Mac to create a virtual copy. I'm going to make the easiest black and white edit ever just by hitting V. And it should be basically already ready to go. We might want to boost additional contrast if needed. 
Before the shot actually looks pretty dang good right there, I'm gonna bring contrast up just a little bit to say plus 25, and that's great. I like it right there, I don't need to do anything else. Now, some of you might be wondering why we haven't adjusted the eyes, and on this shot, I feel like her eyes are kind of bright enough. If we wanted to do a little bit of work there, we could, but I would recommend you keep it on the very subtle side. If we look over in this thumbnail right now, at this level of brightness, her eyes already look very, very bright, especially when you see it in relation to the rest of her skin. So if we do any additional brightening or any additional enhancing, it could kind of lend itself to being a little bit too strong. What you might want to do is we have an iris enhancing brush in here, which you can kind of lift out a little bit of extra color in her irises. And so that's kind of a cool effect to do. But again, when it's this close up, you don't want it to be too strong. Let me turn up the flow so you guys can see what it actually is. When it's this close up, it's going to be a very strong effect. We have to make sure that we keep them on the more subtle side. But it does do a great job of lifting out kind of that green a little more. I'm going to tone it down, and then we're going to zoom out, make sure that we like the overall look and effect. And I'm still going to just adjust it down a little bit so it's not too powerful. And it looks okay about right there. So again, that's an adjustment that really wouldn't make a huge difference on the second shot, but if you did want to apply it, just select the first image. We're going to select the second image. You're going to hit Control shift s or Command-Shift-S on a Mac, hit Check None, and then what we're going to do is just apply this Local Adjustments brush. Since the brushes are identical from image to image, it's only going to add just that, uh, just that little iris enhancement basically that we just basically uh, did right then. All right, I said basically a lot right there, but that's all right. We won't edit that out. All right, so there's our black and white version. I'm going to do one other version of this shot, and I wanted to kind of create a more subtle, maybe kind of faded vintage look to this image. And so what we're going to do is select a different curve to create that effect. And this is really where the preset system comes in handy because this saves you a lot of time. Now what I want from this final virtual copy of this image is I want a really nice kind of bright, light and airy feel that's kind of faded a little bit. And it's also cooler. We kind of get more whites in there, so all the colors kind of been faded out. And let's see if we can do this in one click. And this is the kind of the power of the preset system, is that once you've learned the system, it's really easy to get exactly where you want to go in one click. So because I want a cool and brightened, washed out look, let's go and select that exact curve. So we're going to go to the cool curves. We're going to go right to our bright washes. And I'm going to select Azure, which is blue. And let's see if that gets us what we want. And it does. We have our exact look we want right here, just that nice, cool, and bright, washed out look. And I'm going to just adjust my temperature up one little click, and that's perfect right there, guys. All right, guys, so we are done. We have created three different looks for this image, and let's go over them now. So here was our original image. This is what it looked like straight out of the camera, raw. Then we have our standard color version. Now we have our, let's go to the black and white first. Here's our black and white version, and then our kind of faded, brightened, and washed out version right here. All right, hope you all enjoyed this tutorial, and we'll see you guys in the next video.